what's up you guys this is Bree. i am a licensed practical nurse welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you are new so in today's video you all are getting a voiceover because i'm on my lunch break and i just wanted to be able to record without having to uh, take off my work badge and all that but anyway in today's video i wanted to talk to you all about working in corrections kind of give you all some insight about how my experience was and what it's like working in a jail facility i thought this would be important because right now lpn contracts for correctional facilities are hot um a lot of uh a lot of the lpn contracts are for correctional facilities and that's where the money is so i wanted to give you all some tips and just to kind of let you know what it's like working in a jail if you've been considering uh, if you've been considering getting a contract, but just a little apprehensive because it is working at a jail. Okay, so I'll be going over safety, job duties, work hours, how it is dealing with inmates, contracts, and pay. So let's get into it. <clears throat> okay, so you will probably hear me say patient and inmate interchangeably. They pretty much mean the same thing. All right, so safety, that's one of the most common questions I get is working in a jail safe. How do you feel? Do you feel like you are in any danger? And the short answer is, yes, I do feel safe working at a jail. I don't feel like I'm in danger. Uh, honestly, I felt like working in the jail, I felt a little bit more secure than I did working at the hospital. Because when you work at the jail, you have a correctional officer with you pretty much at all times. You're never to be alone with the inmate. And when you work at the hospital, of course, it's just you and your patients and you're subjected to getting hit, slapped, kicked, insulted, yelled at, you know, all that. So um, I do feel a little bit safer working at the correctional facility. The only difference is, is just like the demographic of people that you're caring for. Um, you know, working with inmates, you may have someone that says something like, you know, pretty inappropriate to you versus working at the hospital you won't get as many, you know, rude patients like that, but there are patients that, you know, act up as well. So it just, you know, it just really depends. But yes, I, I did feel safe working at the jail. So if you are considering working at the jail, just make sure you ask them about their safety protocol and how they expect you to be around inmates. And is there a correctional officer with you at all times? Let's see. Um, so job duties. Basically, I worked at two jails and the job duties that I saw for sure that the nurse had to do that I had to do was med pass. Now, I've only worked at two correctional facilities and the job duties varies depending on the location, but they are relatively the same. So med pass you have a big morning med pass you have an afternoon med pass for like the diabetic patients and then you have like the evening med pass so when I was working night shift I would do the p.m. med pass in the morning no what am I saying <laughs> I would do the p.m. med pass you know starting at like 7 p.m. 8 p.m. and then I would do a second med pass at 6 a.m. and that would be for the diabetics and for the trusty inmates that are you know waking up a little bit earlier than the general population because they work outside. So I would do med pass for them in the mornings. And then you would have your day shift nurse who would do the, you know, like 7 a.m. med pass. And then they would do like the 4 p.m. like insulin, you know, blood sugar checks, that type of thing. Uh, one of the good things about working in correctional setting is that you can pre-pull meds. And this really helps med pass go by a lot quicker um, some nurses would disagree, but it's up to your discretion. I personally liked it because I had so many inmates to pass meds to. When I first went and I tried to give meds like per patient, like as they were coming, it, it took me, it just took me forever to get through it versus when I already had it pre-pulled. So that's a good thing about working in, uh, corrections is that you can pre-pull meds. Uh, when you do a, when you are doing med pass, another thing that you will have to do probably is doing like um, cows assessments, and that's opiate withdrawals, 
in um, alcohol assessments, blood pressure checks, blood sugar checks, but all of that would be like notated on the screen, like for that patient, what that um, physician wants you to do or whatever the order is. So you won't just be left out there hanging the the systems that they use or the the systems that they use in the facilities that I was in. Um, it, it pretty much spells out everything for you as far as what to do for the inmate. Another thing is too, when you work in the, uh, when you work in the jail, every inmate is not on your med pass list. Like it's only specific inmates that are on med pass that have medication and orders that are input into the system. So don't think that you'll be having to give meds to every inmate or see every inmate. It's not like that. It's just like, you know, certain patients or certain inmates per pod or whatever and they come up on the screen and their orders are in there and those are like the only patients or only inmates that you tell the correctional officer that you want to see everybody whose name is on the medication list so another job duty is intakes so doing intakes intakes basically means when you have new patients they come in I keep saying patients, but inmates, inmates, patients, like I said, I'll be using it interchangeably. But when you have the new inmates come in like off the street and you do what's called an intake and that's like doing their initial health assessment, seeing if they're on any medication, do they have any health problems? Do they have any mental health problems? It's like a whole screening that you do. um, So that way you can let the physician, the on-call physician know like, Hey, this person takes this medication. Um, It's just like a whole process because you have to, you know, get in contact with the pharmacy and all that. So since I worked night shift at one facility, I would do intakes. I would do the initial health assessment and I would contact the provider if, you know, any of the vital signs were off or if they answered yes to any of like suicidal ideations or anything like that. That's what I did on night shift. Now on day shift, they would do intakes as well, but they also you know, we'll contact pharmacy, contact, you know, who they needed to, you know, contact for that patient and maybe contact other providers, other doctor's offices and things like that. That's more of a a day shift responsibility. But like I said, it depends on the jail that you're working at, because when I worked at one jail, it was the paramedics that did intakes. But the first jail that I worked at, it was a little bit smaller. So that was on me to do intakes so that's another thing just find out like what what job duties would you have and how how big is the facility that you're going to be working with because you may have a facility where you have like two nurses on each shift or it may be small to where you're just like the nurse for that for that shift so that all that kind of stuff just depends on the facility and the job duties and the staffing and all that Um, all females get pregnancy tests. Some inmates will get like drug screens if they wanted like some withdrawal medications. You would want to make sure that they actually are on drugs in order to get those withdrawal medications. So you have to, you know, screen for that. Let's see. So I'll give you an example. Um, sometimes you have inmates that come in and they're doing an intake, you know, they're coming up the street and they have elevated, elevated blood pressure, or they may complain of stomach pain. What you would do, you would send those vital, vital signs to the provider. Um, you know, let them know what kind of symptoms they're having. And the provider may send you something back, like give amlodipine 10 milligrams by mouth one time and bisacodal, however many, however many milligrams, one time recheck vitals in an hour so that's what you would do you would follow the physician orders recheck vital signs document and there you go so that's pretty much how that works as far as like intakes and all that another things that another job duty is sick calls so when there is a health or medical concern with an inmate they have the ability to put in what is called a sick call And what happens is it's sent to the nurse's station and from there they would add, the inmate would be added to the sick sick call schedule. So what I would do is I would go through the sick calls every shift and see and schedule them by order of importance. And I would try to get 
everybody seen by, you know, the next day. Or I would just do like an emergency where I would just see him while I was on, you know, while I was there that day. So this is an example of a sick call. It may state that he has a toothache. He put it in the system. He has a toothache. He's been having it for like three days. You would then add him to the schedule to be seen by the nurse. <laughs> the nurse, either whether it's you or the next shift nurse, what you would do is you would assess the tooth. You would see if there's a crack or an abscess. And then you would send a message to the provider and put him on the list to be seen by the dentist when they come. But what you, what the provider would probably do is based off of what you just put what you just uh, put in and document it, he would probably send like a stat order of amoxicillin and ibuprofen 800. Then you would be able to administer those meds because you have an order. Um, but let's say if you assess, you assess the tooth and you didn't see any crack, redness, or abscess, you would put his symptoms into an automated system. You wouldn't necessarily send it to the provider, but you would put it in there like they have an automated system and... You would put him his symptoms, vital signs, and the system would put in an order that doesn't. The system will put in an order that doesn't require a prescription. So they'll might say something like um, five hundred milligrams Tylenol times five days, or gel times five days, something like that. Like something that is over the counter, but you still need an order, but you don't need a prescription. So I hope that helps. I hope that's not like real confusing. I hope I was able to explain that. Another job duty is emergency calls. So there are some nights where you will get emergency calls that you must respond to, even if you think the inmate is, you know, maybe they're not telling the whole truth or they're exaggerating because honestly, some inmates just want to get out of their cell. So they'll, you know, say anything. But things like chest pain, shortness of breath, injuries from fighting, self-harm, Uh, You probably have to get orders to do an EKG, urinalysis, drug screens, wound care, IV meds, nebulizer, etc. But some of the time you just have to use your nursing judgment and send them to the hospital because there's only so much that you can do. Like I think I had an inmate one time. She came. um, She got into a real bad fight with another inmate and she was bleeding really bad, just leaking real bad. Um. And at that point, all you can really do is uh, clean her up, get her statement about what happened, check her vital signs, and then send her off because she needed stitches or something like that. Like, we're not doing stitches <laughs> at the jail. Like, we're not doing that. But, like, you would, that's, you would document, make sure you, um, you know, cover all your bases, do your assessments, and then you, you send them off because at that point, you've done everything that you can do. Let's see. Next, I have medication inventory. Uh, Basically, you just have formulary meds and patient-specific meds. Um, You just send out requests as patients um, run out of medications, contact the pharmacy for order changes, that type of thing. The more of the communicating part is more so like day shift. But I was night shift, and I would pretty much be responsible for like getting the new meds that have been sent over to us scanning those in and you know putting them where they need to go but I really like I said day, night shift you're not really contacting anybody you also have to do medical rounds which are really important and also make sure that you document really well I bring this up because I don't know if y'all been hearing about these inmates been passing away and getting killed in jail and all of that that type of stuff is like scary for me I don't ever want to be caught up in nothing like that I don't want Uh, inmate to pass away on my shift and it has anything to do with like nursing documentation or I didn't do my rounds or any of that like you know it's it's only so many things that are inside of your control like you can't there's nothing that you can do if an inmate gets into a fight with you know his cellmate and you know he passes away like that you know that's not there's nothing that you could do about that but if you have an inmate that has like really bad withdrawals and the order is to check on them like every two hours, get their vital signs, get their O2 or something like that. Don't go in there and document that you're doing that 
And then you're really not doing that because if something happens to that inmate and they go back and check cameras to go see that you go check his O2 level before it dropped to 60 and you said that it was 99, but when they, like, you know what I mean? Like, make sure that you are really covering your bases. Don't, don't lie on documentation. Really cover yourself. If it's something that you feel like is outside of your control or you don't know what to do, there's always somebody that you can contact for help. So I just think that's very important. And make sure to remember that. All right. Um, let's see. So work hours. So we talk about work hours now. Um, so at both facilities that I worked at, there were some nurses that worked like Monday through Friday, eight hour shifts. Then there were other nurses that work 12 hours and rotate weekends. The first contract that I had, I was 7P to 7A at one facility and then at another facility that I worked at. This facility was a little bit bigger. And so you had at least two nurses on each shift. But they hired when the contract that I was hired for, they wanted me to work. Was it 3 to 11? I don't know if it was 3 p.m. to 11 or it was 11 to 7 or something like that. But because it was only an eight hour shift, I was only working Monday through Friday. But at the first jail that I worked at, it was a 12 hour shift and it was like rotating uh, weekend. So I would work, let's see, like Monday, Tuesday, off Wednesday, Thursday, work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then the on the alternate weekend, I'll be off Monday, Tuesday, work Wednesday, Thursday, off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's how they that's how they do the rotating shifts. Let's see. So let's talk about dealing with inmates because that's another big question that I get. So the first thing that I will say is you want to protect yourself and do not give out your full name. That is the advice that I got multiple times and I think that it's important. Because inmates have access and they will look you up on social media. They will Google you. Sometimes they have people on the phone that they talk to that will look you up. So me, I just went by my last name, like Nurse Johnson. Um, I didn't tell them any of my personal business. You can you can communicate because, like, they're not all bad people. Some people are genuine when they're talking to you, asking you stuff. Some people just, you know, some people are nice. You can, you can get a feel for some people. But, um, you know, keep it surface level. You shouldn't be really getting too conversational because you're really there to give care and make your money, not really making friends. But, you know, you just use it to your discretion. Another big thing that I would say is try not to know what their charges are. Like, honestly, it's really none of our business to know. But I say this because you don't want to unknowingly treat anyone different because you're triggered by what they did. Like, I'll just use me. I have like a disdain (laughs) for people that hurt and harm kids, you know? So I try not to, I would try not to know or hear other conversations about what an inmate did because you can't judge a book by its cover. You might see someone in there that's like, oh, he just seems really nice. He seems like a really sweet guy. He seems like a really good guy. You know, he probably got caught up in some trouble. And then come to find out that, you know, he murdered a child or murdered somebody or, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying like it just has to be a kid, but you you know what I'm saying? Like, just, I would rather not know. Like, I would just, my biggest advice is just to not know. Because at the end of the day, regardless if you are upset about what they did or if you you feel personal, you know, feel a personal way about something that they did, it's still your job to take care of them. You know what I mean? So I would just stay away from that. And honestly, if you think that's something that you would struggle with, then the jail setting may not for, you know, may not be for you because, you know, you're there to treat everybody the same, give the same, you know, quality care as best as you can. You need to have thick skin and don't take anything personally. I know this is easier said than done, but you have to remember that this is a jail. A lot of people there are not in a good mental state. You're out 
you know, living on the outside, they're in there. <laughs> so, you know, just just keep that kind of perspective when somebody's not having a bad, when someone's having a bad day or someone's trying to give you a, you know, a hard time. I'm not saying that you should tolerate any disrespect, but just realistically, you know, just think of the circumstances. And my next tip or whatever I I have in bold, it says treat everyone the same. You don't want to show favoritism and don't do any favors because they're going to remember. And then next thing you know, you're going to have a whole line of people asking you to give them a Tylenol just because you gave one person a Tylenol because they told you that they had a headache. So now everybody's going to have a headache. So to cut that short, you treat everyone the same, make everybody follow the same protocol, same procedures. If you want something for a headache, you know, put it in a sick call and, you know, we'll try to bring it to you. But don't don't think, OK, I'm going to do this for her. And then, you know, I'll just be nice because that person, those other inmates that are in line or just watching, they'll they'll remember that you did that for them yesterday and they're going to try you tomorrow. So um, you will learn how some well, I wouldn't say inmates. This is just people, you know, in general. But I would say inmates because of the the type of, you know, the facility that you're in. Sometimes they do lie and manipulate. Some people lie about symptoms just to be put on the sick call list so that they can have a reason to get out of the cell. Um, there are other things like asking for, like, alcohol wipes, Um I didn't think that anything was wrong with giving out alcohol wipes, but a correctional officer told me they use them and they squeeze all the liquid out. They try to make alcoholic drinks and stuff like that. So I don't know anything about that. But when he told me that, I was like, okay, we're going to shut that down. Another big one is inmates will claim that they have chest pain so that they can so that they can come and be in the nurse's face because they know that you have to respond to chest pain. You have to respond to, you know, certain things and chest pain is one of them. And a lot of the times, you know, you would get these inmates down there you would give them an EKG and it's like no abnormal findings. Um, and it, you know, it just goes to show that they just wanted to get out. Sometimes they do probably have like a little anxiety or like uneasy feeling, you know, all of that. But It's just like a constant, you got to let them know that you're not the nurse for that. Like you're not going to play that. Um, Because if they want to play, then you, you know, make sure you put them through the, the whole like process, everything that they need to do. They're going to have to be sitting down in the medic medication uh, room. They call it like the infirmary, I guess. They'll be sitting in the infirmary for however many days that they have to sit there because they have chest pain. Like, don't let them play with you like that. Because it'll keep happening. Um, let's see. Do not get medication without an order. Do not give medication without an order. Do not give medication without an order. And make sure you have a paper trail and a reason for everything that you're doing. Like I said, especially with these um, inmates passing away and all of that. Definitely make sure that you are covering your butt. And like I said, if you can prevent it, do not get medication without an order. Uh, let's see. So you will feel like a piece of meat working in the jail, especially if you are a woman. So cover up. I don't care if you don't feel like you have anything. If you feel like your body is stick figure, if you feel like you're a little too full figure, men like all women, all bodies, all shapes, all sizes. They haven't seen women. They haven't had access to them. So please believe they will be saying some inappropriate things. They will make you feel like a piece of meat, make you feel like, you know, you just dangled out there. But just have respect for yourself and don't let anybody disrespect you and try to cover up as much as possible. So let's talk about pay. Um, I'll just keep this short and sweet. Honestly, like I said, when I worked at the, the first facility, I was on rotating shifts. So my check when I would work a four a four day week would be around sixteen hundred eighty dollars a week. And when I worked just my three days, it'll be around like fourteen hundred. So I've been getting um contract offers recently for about eighteen hundred a week if you work four days and it'll go to like sixteen hundred if you work the three days if you're on rotating shift. So that's what contract prices are looking 
like out here in Georgia for LPNs, working at a, a, a correctional facility. I can't really speak to other states. But yeah, so that's about what what the pay is. So, you know, not too bad. Not too shabby, not too shabby. So that is all I have for this video. I really hope this video helped you all. I have to go get, I have to go clock back in, so I gotta go. But I hope this video helped. I hope it answers some questions. I hope you feel prepared to take on a correctional facility assignment if that is what you choose to do. I want to say thank you all so much for watching this video. I will see you all in my next one. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And bye.